Okay, this is um, one of my uh, Meadowlark Blue Heron 2 speakers here. Another one's over there. Um, I suddenly noticed that um, there seemed to be a lot less treble on this speaker than the other one. I particularly noticed this when I started playing the uh, Beatles' new uh, mono uh, reissue, analog reissue. And I also got out my original um, Beatles one that I bought when it first came out. Um, I don't know how long ago was that, 50 years or something. Still got it. Compared to two, funny enough, the original one is louder than the new one. Also, this is, um, the cover photo is um, slightly different. It's darker on the original one. Anyway, uh, so I'd, it seemed that there's hardly any treble. Well, there is treble, but it's noticeably less on this speaker than the other one. So um, I, I took the tweeter out, and just in case anyone ever wants to take a, one of these out, you undo the um, torx screws, and it's like really stuck in. You can't get it out, but um, you think it's glued in. So you take one of these uh, tools here. It's got a little um, hook on the end. It's used for model cars, nitro cars, for hooking the springs on the carburetor around the exhaust. Anyway, you, you, I put this in the hole here and it hooks around the back and then you pull it and the um, tweeter, that's pulled really, really hard and the uh, tweeter eventually pops out. Um, if you want to see the tweeter, it's just, uh, let's just get it out. There it is, it sits in um, a wooden recess Two wires to it. So I, I'd taken the tweeter out. To, I thought it was faulty, but I think it was all right. So um, I then took the uh, back off, and here you see the um, back comes off, and it's got all the circuitry inside for the crossover networks, and um, the various crossover network wires going into all the different speakers, <laughs> until I discovered um, uh, this wire down here. Uh, was not connected and it's it, um, it snapped off of this uh, negative terminal down here the wire runs up the side into um, up to the top here in the tweeter uh, well not the tweeter it goes then to um, yeah, the negative it's the negative one and it's one of the negative ones on uh, run up to the tweeter, one of the tweeter ones up here. So, um, though weirdly, both the speakers, tweeter and the other one, seem to be working with not much volume. So, uh, <laughs> I don't, maybe there's some magnetic interaction. Anyway, I'm going to solder it back on and then I'll check it out and hopefully it's going to um, to fix it. Well, it must fix it. I mean, it should be soldered on anyway because. Um, the two wires go to that post and um, on the uh, other other one over here well, I've screwed it back in but um, the two wires are actually joined together before they go to the post so a slight different construction but the, um, the bottom terminals yeah well, I think it's the base one though so I don't think it's going to fix this treble Thing. So um, I'll let you know how I get on uh, after I've done some more investigation. Okay, after further investigation with these uh, Meadowlark Blue Heron 2 speakers to find out why there's no volume or very little volume on this tweeter on one of them. Um, when I opened them up, uh, I've got them both open now on the floor to look at inside uh, these comprehensive networks uh, here, crossover networks. I did find on um, the one with the low output, the um, wire down here uh, had come off. And I thought that was it, but actually that is a wire for um, the air, uh, from one of the bass speakers. So further investigation, I was looking at this um, circuitry and these, these things here, 
there's quite a few of them and these big things here and, and here and there's also um, the couple uh, in, in line down here and inside down here and there's one on the other side turns out they are Bybee Bybee components uh, for, supposed to reduce something called quantum noise well um, developed for submarines well, I don't know why they put them in speakers. I mean, some people I read on the forums, oh yeah, it makes a big difference. I don't know, sounds like snake oil to me because um, submarines, they're listening at zero noise, complete silence. They listen for the faintest, faintest sound and anything background noise like any electron noise generated by any piece of electronic circuitry well, you'll hear it because everything's on max gain. So anything that reduces the noise would be great. But in a speaker, you're pumping so much power and volume and amplitude through these speakers. How are these things developed for like zero level to make any difference is beyond me. Anyway, I had decided to, I started investigating these things and um, I find it online. And I find these online here. And um, I'll just open it up if you can see it. It says here uh, 0.025 ohms. And it says recommended for um, inputs out and for tweeters. Well, um, I traced the tweeter one back uh, and it comes down, um, it down comes down this wire coil. Um, actually comes down this wire, <laughs> get it right in a minute, get these things go all over the place, uh, ends up going through this capacitor, through this resistor here, through this Bybee to this terminal here, positive, and that is the tweeter route. So, um, this is the good speaker over here, and it's basically the same, uh, it's got the, um, the Bybee down there, uh, going to the resistor and this. So I have this exceptionally good old um, RS components, very low resistance measuring meter. I've had it years, um, 30 years, maybe longer, and it still works perfectly. So um, I've connected it across the good speaker, positive and negative, across the Bybee down here. I'll turn it on. And it comes up 0.023 ohms, 2223. According to specification over here, it says um, it says uh, 0.025. Well, that's close enough. So, uh, so I then check the other circuit. If I just do that now, just take it, just remove the clips. Uh, put that clip on that one side of the Bybee. Uh, luckily, uh, luckily the terminal was not insulated. And um, on on this terminal down here, and um, you just have to get a good connection on these because it uses one it passes a tiny tiny current, and then it measures the differential voltage. Uh, so I just need to get a good connection. When you're measuring very low current, you've got to get a good connection or you won't get a proper reading. Let's just get that on there. That's on, I think. And uh, going back to the meter, which I've just moved over here and turned on. 45 ohms. Well, I double checked it with another meter and it is. So... That by be whatever it's supposed to be 0.025 is a high resistance, and that's why there's no power to that tweeter. So, I'm looking at the uh, going back to their, I think if it's assume it's this gold one, blimey, they're 250 US dollars each. <laughs> I mean, um, what sort of person pays that money except <laughs> someone? who believes a snake oil salesman. 
Well, I wouldn't, but they're in these speakers. I never bought these speakers new, by the way, but I did pay, um, I did pay a lot of money for them, though they were then third hand by the time I bought them. But uh, I believe they were like 10,000 US dollars new a pair. Plus, it's said in the ad that the Bybee and the capacitor have, um, have been upgraded in the crossovers for another 3,000 US. Well, look at the cost of those Bybees, and considering that each one has um, uh, one, two, three, four, five, three, I can, I can, one, three, I counted about nine in each one. And if they're $250 each, um, yeah. <laughs> well, I wouldn't have paid that, but someone obviously had a lot of money. <laughs> Anyway, I'm not going to buy another Bybee, um, a snake oil Bybee. I'm going to um, have to solder a wire across that Bybee. Uh, it's pretty easy. I've got, um, I'm going to use, I'm not going to use anything really, really fancy. I'm going to use this uh, nice tin piece of solid copper. I've also got a nice, um, I've got some nice silver solder. I've got a soldering iron over there. I'm going to, and I do soldering anyway. It's um, part of my business. So I'm going to solder it up. And uh, I showed you earlier the tweeter. So the tweeter is going to be fine. Um, I'm going to put it back in. <laughs> Someone on the forum said how to get the tweeter out. They said, remove the woof, put your hand up behind and push it out. <laughs> well, anyway, this is a completely solid wood compartment just fitting the tweeter. There's no, <laughs> there is no back opening. So you couldn't do that. But I showed you how you hook it out. Anyway, luckily it wasn't glued in. Though this is um, a little rubber, nice little rubber uh, gasket there. It just got a little stuck on it. So um, I'm going to put that back in. I'm going to solder that. I put it back together. And, um, and then I'll test it and let you know what it all sounds like. So... Um, yeah, let's, uh, I'll get on to that now. Okay, I've finished doing uh, all the repairs and mods on my Hi-Fi system, uh, the SME TD uh, original deck that I've got. Um, I've added the, uh, S, the damping system up the back there, and uh, I've modified the black cube, which is now refitted back in the base with the extra gain I, I put in it to suit the Pickering very low output cartridge. I fixed uh, one of these speakers that had a blown uh, Bybee component in it and uh, and um, I put it all back together again. I'm just trying to find a record that I can put demonstrate it with on YouTube that won't every time I try and demonstrate YouTube says this is copyright material you can't use it. <laughs> I tried a few records way back really really old things like muddy waters and they still say it's copyrighted <laughs> let's try this one um uh altavox zero one uh uk tour 86 limited edition um when you played the domino effect due for release 1987 <laughs> uh, it's a 45 rpm so uh it's whizzing round at the moment and um i'll put it on and turn up the vol see what it sounds like here we go. Put more ball.
Hey, that was really punchy sound uh, for an old record. It was really nice. <laughs> 